Homebrewcon, or HBC as the cool kids call it. And this year it's in San Diego, right in my backyard. This is actually my first time coming to a homebrew conference, and I wanted to take you along to see what it was like, kind of experience it through my eyes, and see maybe if it's something you want to check out in the future. I hope to meet up with some friends, meet some of my homebrew heroes, maybe even meet some of you subscribers that are here. Possibly I'll learn something, but most importantly, we'll drink a lot of great beer. So let's go check it out and see what it's all about. Let's go. If you've never heard of HomebrewCon or been to one, I'll explain quickly. HBC is a multi-day event run by the American Homebrewers Association, or AHA, and it takes place in a new city in the U.S. each year. It's basically a giant meetup for all those who love homebrewing, with a main focus on beer, but it also touches on cider, mead, and other more unique fermentations. There's seminars taught by brewing experts on various topics, an expo with lots of sponsors giving away free stuff, the National Homebrew Competition takes place here, and there's a bunch of social events where the beer flows and people meet up. So I'm gonna take a look at some of these aspects from a first timer's perspective and tell you my thoughts, what I loved, and a few potential gripes. And hopefully I give you an idea of whether or not HBC is worth it all and if you should come next year. The first two days are filled with these little seminars where you can learn about all kinds of things related to brewing. And the sessions started in the morning through the afternoon. They have beginner beer brewing classes, more advanced techniques, style specific seminars, mead, cider, wine info, and in most cases, these are taught by some big names in the homebrewing world. People like John Palmer, Brad Smith, Gordon Strong, Denny Kahn, Drew Beecham, Annie Johnson. If you've read a book or two or listened to a podcast about homebrewing, then some of these names might sound familiar. Some seminars that are about a specific beer or drink will actually serve it there too, which makes it a bit more interactive. As someone who has been curious about non-alcoholic brewing and gluten-free brewing, I found these to be the most informational. My only gripe is that there's a bunch of sessions happening at one time, but luckily the AHA does record the sessions, so you can always go back and listen to them later if you're a member. In between seminars, you can stretch your legs in the expo hall, which is basically a bunch of sponsors of the event with booths. This is where they show off the newest brewing gear, hops, grains, yeast, and there's even a little social area where there's beer on tap. Actually, quite a few of these little booths had some beer to sample, which was fun to see their products in action. All right, I just wanted to share something real quick. So at a lot of these events, you get these little cups and you might be feeling like you got too many things in your hands. You know, you want to, your hands free at the moment. I picked up this great tip from a guy in the elevator. I don't remember your name, but thank you for this. A lot of times they have little koozies that you can get. What people have been doing is attaching their lanyard to the koozie to hold the cup. Let me show you. Basically you feed the lanyard in through like so, and then reattach to your thing. Hold around. And now you can just take your glass and put it in there. And now you're hands free. Pro tip right there. Back in the expo, as you check out each booth, there are free samples at some of the booths to try their stuff. But be warned, people definitely abuse these free handouts. So go early if you want to get a sample. And at some points throughout the day, there's some special events going on like book signings. Wish I got a copy of my simple homebrewing book signed by Denny and Drew. By the way, I told Denny how I made a hazy with chanterelles and he about fell out of his chair. Be sure to check out that video if you haven't. And I even got to participate in a hop chronicles with the Burlosophy crew, trying out a beer made with only Vista hops. It's also a great area to just hang out and talk with people. But really, the best part of Homebrew Con is the social events. At the end of each night, there's a big get together where beer is being served. The first night is called the kickoff party, where local breweries stop by to serve their beer. Night two is club night, where homebrew clubs from around the country come with dozens of beer on tap, and they dress up and decorate their booths in a funky theme. And the last night is the knockout party, where they serve all the leftover beers from the homebrew competition. My favorite was probably club night. I think everyone dressing up and having fun with the booths brought some amazing energy. And I tried so many unique beers and drinks that I wouldn't normally have. I had an alcoholic coconut tapache that was phenomenal. I also tried some Lambics, a first for me, as well as a 10-year-old barrel-aged sour called Dark Star. That was just, wow. Plus club night is basically the heart to why this event is so great in my opinion. No matter which way I turn, I ran into somebody else that loves to brew and loves beer. Normally when I talk brewing with my friends or family, their eyes just kind of glaze over, but here you can talk to anybody about anything related to beer and people's eyes just light up. You're surrounded by other lovers of the hobby and everyone's extremely happy to be there. I also want to say thank you to anyone that came up to me, said hello, and gave some kind words. 
It's really inspiring to meet some of the viewers, learn about which videos you liked or what you learned from my videos. And you seriously were all really lovely. Cheers to you all. But truly the best highlight was getting to hang out with Steve of The Apartment Pro and Bradley of Portly Gentleman. If you're not subscribed to them, go do it now. These are amazing guys and they absolutely lived up to the hype and more. Steve and I in particular got to hang out a lot, going to seminars together and walking around during some of the social events. We even worked on an upcoming collab, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for hanging with me, fellas, and making the first homebrew con one to remember. So, is homebrew con actually worth it? Well, let's talk prices first. And I know it costs a lot to put an event on, but man, when you start to add this up, it is not very cheap. The full conference access this year was $399, or if you got early bird access, you might save about 100. There's also passes for a single day that are cheaper, but that doesn't include the AHA membership of $43 a year. Then if you don't live in the city like I did, you need to consider air travel, ground travel, lodging, and then food. By the way, they did have some meals included, but it was very meat-based. So I found myself eating a lot of almonds and olives for dinner one night. They could definitely work on their plant-based options. But anyway, as I said, it can add up quickly. So for a hobby that can sometimes be expensive, especially if you're a gearhead, I wish it was a tad less expensive. But if you have buddies that you homebrew with, you can always make a road trip out of it. Stay together at a cheap Airbnb, and if you book early enough, save a few bucks. But with all that considered, I actually do think it's worth it to check it out, even just once. This is the one time of year where you can get together with like-minded people who are all there to have fun and enjoy the hobby we love. The people are really what make it special. I made a ton of new friends, met up with people I only knew online, and tried some truly amazing beer. I know I'll be coming back again, but for the camaraderie alone. And next year, the Homebrew Con is happening at the Great American Beer Festival in Denver, Colorado. So you know it's going to be a wild one. So hope to see many of you there next year. And if you do, be sure to come by and say hey. So that's it for Homebrew Con from my POV. If you've gone before, let me know about your experience. And you might have noticed some of the brew show gear I was wearing throughout the trip. If you're looking for a way to support this channel, consider buying some merch. Or you can always click the join button and become a channel member and help produce the show, get perks, and behind the scenes content. All for less than a pint of beer and way less than an HBC ticket. Thanks to all you that support me and help me to keep making videos. Cheers and happy brewing.